everyone, this is Elad from Astrolabe Diagnostics, and today I would like to talk about dealing with batch effects in cytometry data. Um, if you're doing biology research, you are going to have batch effects. There is no way around it, whether you're using the CITA, flow cytometry, any assay, any instrument. Um, you're dealing your sample, you're, you're acquiring your sample over a period of time, um, you're always going to see batch effects. In the context of cytometry, I, I think the most common batch effect is fluctuations in the MFI of a given marker that are due to technical variation, not due to any biological effect. And um, at the end of the day, a T cell is a T cell, even if the MFI of CD3 fluctuates. Um, but uh, these kinds of effects are often very tricky to deal with. And just for an example, um, we're using a toy data set that was acquired uh, by Brian Sellers at the National Institute of Health. And in this toy example, uh, we took PBMC uh, from one donor and we stained it with just five markers uh, listed here. And we introduced an artificial batch effect by diluting uh, CD4. So we're seeing five samples, uh, five different dilutions of CD4. And in each of these, I would say the staining quality of CD4 is pretty good. Um, you can effectively identify the CD4 T cells, um, but there is some variation in the intensity of the um, of the high peak of the positive cells. And um, <clears throat> when we take this data and cluster it, so um, we took all five samples, we combined them, which is a very common practice um, in both mass and flow cytometry, and we clustered it with 16 clusters in flowsome. Um, and then we wanted to annotate the clusters based on the heat map. So to the left here, you're seeing the heat map, five markers, the intensity of each one, so you can see the CD3 positive and negative cells, the CD4 positive and negative cells, and so on. And um, we can see two clusters that have a signature of effective memory CD4 T cells. Um, so they're negative for 45RA and CCR7. And the question is, why do we have two clusters? Um, and if this was a real study, I think that a common question would be, is this a biological effect? Have we found something novel here? However, when we actually look at the distribution of the different samples across these clusters, we see a very clear effect. So for cluster number one has the least diluted samples, while cluster number two has the two most diluted samples. And since this is a toy data set, since we know the batch effects coming in, we can clearly identify it. However, this is a real concern when you're running your experiment. Um, and this is not a flow sum issue. You would see this with flow sum, with spade, with uh, phenograph, with TSNI, with UMAP, any method you use for analyzing this is susceptible to batch effects. And one solution for addressing this is metaclustering. So metaclustering is a computational technique that avoids both downsampling and batch effects. And the way it works is you cluster each sample separately. So um, you're effectively eliminating the, um, the uh, intersample batch effects by clustering each sample on its own. Then you end up with 20 or 30 clusters per sample, way too many to annotate. So what you can do is you can cluster the clusters across the samples and you end up with, let's say, 20 or 30 meta clusters, which you can annotate. And then you can take these annotations and apply them to the original samples. Um, this technique has been uh, presented in several papers. I'm giving three citations here. Full disclosure, I'm an author on all of these papers. However, by no means am I the inventor of this. Um, and um, I think the most credit goes to the first publication uh, by Jacob Levine et al. So I do want to talk about batch correction using Astrolabe. Uh, we actually took the study uh, from Brian Sellers at the NIH um, and um, we used the full data set. The full data set has two donors in it and it involves these artificial batch effects on four markers. So two donors and 16 conditions per donor and ran that using Astrolabe. And what we see here is the frequency of the effector memory CD4 T cells in each one of the donors. The purple is donor one, the green is donor two. The x-axis is the dilutions of the different antibodies. And you see here that Astrolabe uh, faithfully recovers the frequency of the, um, of the effector memory CD4 T cells across all the samples. There is no magic here. This is using the exact trick I mentioned, where Astrolabe clusters and annotates each sample separately and then combines them for the uh, follow-up statistics. So if you have any questions about batch effects in cytometry data, please reach out. I'm Elad at astrolabediagnostics.com. Furthermore, if you need help analyzing your data, if you're facing batch effects which are tricky to overcome, uh, please talk to us. Uh, the Astrolabe platform can, um, can deal with these. We deal with them on a regular basis. 
and I'm happy to talk and see how we can help. Thank you for your time.